Good morning. This is uh, Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World. This is my first uh, edition in my uh, newly developed uh, mobile taping unit. It's my work truck um, at a work location and uh, the Lord woke me up at one this morning and uh, asked me to do this. And you know, uh, I that can sound a little goofy and I, I used to, you know, bug me back in the charismatic days when uh, people would talk in those terms and say, wow, the Lord Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. And that, which reminds me of another story. My my good friend, uh, John Beeler, told me this story and I've repeated it d dozens of times. And I I probably will until I get him to share his own testimony. Uh, he and I were working at, at the same uh, manufacturing company and he's a welder and I was the uh, assembly floor manager, uh, foreman. And we would often talk about God, you know, often in the morning, you know, heading for our workstations, we'd stop and have a chat. And uh, he, he has a heart for God. And that was kind of the most important thing on my mind for most of my life. Uh, you know, it would come and go a little bit, my first love. But uh, it was always either on the surface, above the surface, or below the surface. It was always something that God, God was bugging me all these years. Anyway. Back to John, we were talking about this subject of hearing from the Lord, and uh, it kind of bugged him too, the way people would talk, like, oh, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. And, and uh, we, John and I both at that time, we weren't as familiar with hearing God's voice, but we were both in the learning process. And anyway, John's telling me this story, and he's a real quiet guy. He doesn't, uh, whatever he says, you know he's sincere. He does. He doesn't make stuff up. He's quiet and the words that come out of his mouth are are uh, are very very truthful anyway john said uh, he was praying and he was complaining to the lord about this this phenomena we'll call it where um, believers would talk in these terms oh the lord told me this the lord told me that and john in his prayer said lord how come i never hear your voice and John says he had the most distinct thought entered his mind at that exact instant. And it said, if you can't hear my voice, why don't you get a little closer to me? And uh, I just thought that was the coolest story ever. Uh, there, You know how the idea that uh, a, picture, a picture tells a thousand words. Well, a story is the same. A, a good story explains something way better than... Uh, writing a book about how to hear God's voice. So there's another story, another one actually. Look up on the Full Gospel Businessmen in Canada website and go to Good News TV and uh, see it here. You click on all those things, and then uh, you'll come up with a with a listing of all the TV programs that have played on Miracle Channel up here in Canada at Lethbridge. Uh, and the third one on the list is. Uh, Kent, Kent Clark, Clerk, and watch that, you know, and he, he, we talk, he and I talk about hearing God's voice. Anyway, these are awesome stories, and now I better get back off this rabbit trail to where I'm going. The Lord woke me up at one uh, this morning, and, and I had started this project yesterday and just finished watching it. Something significant is supposed is supposedly going to happen on the 16th of April, which is tomorrow. This is the 15th, and we're doing our taping for the Good News TV program in Regina here at Access TV over uh, today, like starting at 8 o'clock this morning. So that's what, eight, six hours from now. It's now about 2, a little after 2. And we're going to start, and it just is a living in the middle of a miracle. We do... 28 programs in a day and a half, and the TV station just is in awe of how us, a bunch of old guys, until me, me, a younger guy at 62, came along. I'm the youngest one amongst them, and uh, how these old guys can pull this off. You know, how do you make 28 high-quality programs in uh, basically uh, 10 hours the first day and and four the next? So. That 14 hours takes us 14 hours to do 28 high quality 
TV programs with a bunch of volunteer guys and one professional we hire, Graham, uh, to uh, run the tech equipment. And we hire the studio, of course, with all their high-tech equipment and uh, produce these programs. Anyway, it's very, very amazing. Now, that was another rabbit trail. So here it is. The Lord woke me up, and I feel I'm supposed to get these. Uh, the last program I did yesterday, uh, late in the day, and I just watched it, and I like how it came across. It's a, 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 a pretty good explanation of how the Feast of Weeks works beginning with the Feast of First Fruits, and how, uh, in talking to my friend Ron Lazeski, who's going to share it tomorrow on the TV program, and his uh, um, counterpart, a, a gal, they're, I shouldn't, how do I put this, we, we're, prayer, we're prayer warriors, and we meet a, a, a home church, the four of us, uh, we've been meeting for a couple months, and amazing things are happening every week that we show. So uh, I've talked a little bit about home study groups and home churches. Uh, so we're creating a model, I'm going to say, and we'll keep you up to date on what goes on and how you can follow that model. And again, I'm not trying to empty the churches out, but the churches are not doing their jobs, which is to equip the saints and teach them how to make disciples. So there's three or four rabbit trails to get back to what I'm talking about. The Lord has been saying to me, I, I believe, <laughs> in my opinion, and uh, that something significant is going to happen on April 16th, which is tomorrow. And he wants me to get these two productions, and maybe even three. This is getting a little long already. I'm at six minutes and I haven't even started. Uh, and it's going to be called The Four Horses of the Apocalypse. And... Uh, Unfortunately, the my quality is a little low because of my lighting here in the truck, and it's the middle of the night is is a little lacking, and uh, it's not meant to be uh, add to the scariness of the whole thing. And uh, the whole idea, of the four horses of the apocalypse, uh, that's kind of an invented uh, terminology, and it it tends to inspire fear. Uh, my poor wife, she she came amongst the uh, the people that God raised her up in the Worldwide Church of God when she was a little girl, and she started hearing all this stuff. And they were kind of fear mongers, you know. The the church, you know, the, actually lots of churches are, you know, they they try to squeeze the ties out of you and uh, uh, f scare you into obedience through fear mongering. Uh, but me, I came along when I was 20 and uh, I took the same information and I just loved it. You know, I just got right into the book of Revelation and I want to know what those four horses meant. Boy, I want to know. And it didn't take me very long at all. And I could see the same four horses in Zechariah. And then uh, in the course of time, I, I noticed how cool it was that the four horses in Zechariah uh, occurred on the, on the, in Zechariah. 6, 1 to 8, and the same four horses are in Revelation 6, 1 to 8. And even though men, uh, you know, put numbers to the, and chapters and all, verses and all that to the scriptures, to the words that God gave us, uh, God is in control of all those things. So anyway, I thought it was kind of cool that he, it was kind of, well, it is, it's a sign. It's a sign that those two are connected. And uh, so anyway, uh, to me, it wasn't scary, and I want what I want to present here isn't meant to be scary at all. It's revelation. I mean, why did God give us this information uh, if there was no purpose in it? Well, uh, it's all summed up in something that y Yeshua said. He said, uh, "I'm telling you these things so that you will not be caught unawares." And there are little, literally thousands and thousands of details about the last days. And God does not want us to be caught unawares. He wants to equip his bride. And then this great number that John saw in, in the book of Revelation, uh, alongside the, the bride of 144,000, he, my lights just went out, so I'll, every time that happens, I will, my, my truck lights are automatic, so they only last about 10 minutes. I'm at nine. That'll be a good uh, counter for me. 
Um, so anyway, where was I? Uh, with this four horses of the apocalypse, I didn't find that scary at all. I found it super intriguing. And uh, there we go. Got more lights. Um, super intriguing. And uh, I wanted, I asked the Lord right from day one. That was 42 years ago. You, I want to know what this stuff means. This is cool. And my poor wife, well, this is scary. And whenever, you know, for, because she was eight years old when she started hearing this stuff and just scared the life out of her. And, and uh, I think my kids, too, to some degree, because they were all part of this church, too, as, as they grew up. I'm going to add one more thing. I'm sorry, I just thought of this. But um, the Worldwide Church of God had predicted that Jesus would return in 1972. And it, they made a big thing of it. Like, it was everybody in that church and probably there were by that point there was 100,000 people at part of that church they all totally believed that Jesus would return in 1972 well uh, I came along in 1975 and uh, I, you know I'm learning all this stuff and ooh, there was a bit of egg on somebody's face so here I am predicting something for tomorrow and uh, not just me it was Ron Lazeski got kind of planted this seed and then we got checking and here, very good chance that tomorrow is the Feast of First Fruits. And um, my previous ep episode 29, I did a pretty good description. I just watched it of, I hope, hopefully everybody can follow around, along fairly well in what I described. But there's two variables to this festival. The first one being you can't, you don't start counting until harvest begins. And you don't know when harvest begins until the farmers go out and start harvesting. So on that week, the Sabbath that follows that week, that work week of six, somewhere in that six days, the farmers went out and started harvesting. And uh, the grain was dry enough, so they started harvesting and putting in their bins. And uh, then that Sabbath, they weren't to eat any of that grain until they did this ceremony on uh, the Sabbath that followed that, that harvest start. And uh, that began the count of seven weeks. Now, that's the next variable. You're only counting the complete units of uh, six work days and a, and a Sabbath. You don't count the New Moon Festivals. And as I've explained in previous episodes, especially the New Moon Festival episodes, the New Moon can be either one day or two days. So that's the second variable. Those, those two cycles that you go through in the count, uh, the, the New Moon Festival, there'll be always two within that frame of seven weeks and we don't know where they'll fit because the moon cycle is independent from the year cycle the the moon determines the uh, the sabbath the work day the six work days and the and the the new moon festival those units and the sun controls or or this gives signs for the yearly months so uh, we're working with two different systems here so there's those two variables. We don't know when the harvest is going to start until it does start. And we don't know the, these two new moon festivals, whether they're going to be one day or two days. And uh, the moon is very, very erratic. It, it's, it's predictable over a long period of time, but month by month, you never know what it's going to do. Its uh, orbit is oblong and strange, and it wobbles, it goes in and out, it flops around back and forth it does all kinds of weird things because that's the way the lord made it and he intended it to be unpredictable so that we can't plan ahead we have to watch we have to look up in the sky and and keep track of the sun and the moon where they are the sun for the seasons and then the moon for the months uh the moon months that is and uh the sun months are are 30 days long and there's 12 of them 360 days and then the 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 four corners of the season uh are just periods of sign time that start with one sign and then with another sign and they'll be either one day or two days but they always keep exactly in tune with the the sea the moon cycle which sun cycle sorry which is 365.2 almost 5 but it's there's it's a zillion decimal points but Enoch's calendar always stays in tune with that there's, it's never off and uh, you just follow the signs from the sun and the moon for all these things 
Okay, where was I? I? Here I'm talking about the four horses of the apocalypse, and it's 15 minutes, and I barely started. Nonetheless, these are all important items in rabbit trails, and uh, I'm kind of thinking uh, I'm going to end up with two two uh, episodes here to do this, but uh, I'll try my best. I, I kind of gave myself a time limit of 26, 27 minutes. That's uh, about my longest episode so far, and if I get to that point, I'll stop it. Uh, listen to myself and fill in any parts that I didn't feel were completely clear and go from there. Anyway, so we're back to the four horses of the apocalypse, but I'm going to call it something different. I, um, I'm i calling the end days uh, as, you know, it's a very, very troubled time. Nine tenths of everybody on earth is going to die and that doesn't sound good, but the thing is God is going to make everybody alive again. He's He's the author of life. He takes it and he gives it, and he tells us not to fear the first death. That's a tough, that's a tough uh, instruction. Don't fear the first death, because you know we really don't know what's going to happen. But if we get in tune with God, if we start to know Him, develop this personal relationship, we get to the point we do not fear death, because death is nothing to fear. We just die, and the, and then something awesome happens. And uh, whether, you know, in the before Jesus died on the cross, they went down into a sort of a holding tank, we'll call it. A, it's not really a prison, but it, it was something they couldn't. They were confined to this spot, you know, all the righteous people that died before the cross. And then uh, Jesus, when he died, he, he went, his body was dead, but he wasn't dead. He went down into hell, it says. Uh, I think it's first or second Peter, and he preached to the spirits in prison there. And and uh, the book of Nicodemus, uh, alternately called Acts upon a Pilate, I think. Pick, get those two names. You'll find the book somewhere. Uh, we got it in this little booklet from Amazon. I think it was called uh, Lost Scriptures of the New Testament. Most of those were bogus, but there was that one that was really, really good. And there was another one that I think was legitimate, but it didn't have a lot of really pertinent information for the end times. At any rate, uh, there we go on another rabbit trail, and I'm losing my thoughts on the four horses of the apocalypse. But um, here we got uh, the end times, but there's beginning times, and we're not to fear the first death, we're to fear the second death. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, I will expand on that somewhere in the future. And uh, again, it's a topic I don't have clear understanding on, but I do have understanding. And I'll share what I know, and God will make it more clear to me and other people and all of you listeners out there. Uh, we're on this together. There's nothing that says I hear the voice of the Lord better than anybody else. We all have the potential to learn that if we put some effort into it. And it starts by reading the scriptures. If you've never read from Genesis to Revelation or to uh, Malachi or wherever the Jewish uh, books end, I, I should look that up because I I got all the information. I In fact, the JPS that I use uh, ends with, uh, I, I just got to look it up and see where it ends, but it contains all the same books. And if you never read those, whether you're Christian or Jewish, that's time to start that. And you read them and then you ask the Holy Spirit to explain them to you and then you read them again and you Boy, you go hard because the last days have begun. And I, I I, believe the Lord has showed me and many others that this year is the year of Jubilee. I'm not too sure how many other people he showed this, but it's going to be 50 years before Jesus returns. Now, I'll just throw in this that uh, Jesus said nobody knows the day or the hour. And to me, that references all the festivals that are based on the sun and the moon. And we really don't know any of the days or the hours until it actually happens. So uh, I just explained the Feast of First Fruits. You don't, there's no way to predict it. You don't know when the harvest is going to start until it starts. You don't know uh, if the new moon festivals are going to be one day or two days until they actually occur. So it's not until that last week uh, that... And sometimes the very last day, really, until you actually know when the feast of first uh, feast of weeks is going to be. So 
that's the way Lord the Lord does everything. He has He keeps us guessing to the last moment, but we got to be watching. And uh, there's some scriptures wrapped around that too. We have to be aware. We have to be watching. We have to understand the scriptures. So here I am explaining the, some of these things. The best way there there goes my uh, lights again. So sorry about that. And uh, that tells me no. Sure enough, we're at 20 minutes. So my timer is at 10. Anyway, I uh, I better be finished here in about six minutes. So I'll definitely be giving you a second one on this four horses of the apocalypse. But I'm trying to explain something. This isn't a scary thing. If we can grasp those two things, that uh, the end days, uh, they entail the birth pangs of the Messiah, which I've talked lots about. So go watch all those episodes. And then it it introduces the kingdom of God, which is a very awesome, peaceful time where there's no Satan, no demons. They're all locked up in a prison. And then they're re-released at the end of the thousand years for a very short time as a second witness for all time, forever and ever and ever. Two witnesses that if we go outside the boundaries of the Lord's instructions, that's what happens. That's what happened to the fallen angels. They were watchers. They started lusting after the beautiful women and they figured out how to have sex with them sort of in a um, second person way because they can't produce sperm, uh, they're spirit beings. And so they produced these children that were weird and kind of GMOs, mixtures of animals and humans and uh, stuff I'm sure I have no idea other than a glimpse because the, the demons and the angels are 20 times smarter than we are. But the Lord is one trillion times smarter than all of us. So it's a no-brainer that uh, the Lord's going to win this thing. Is He's just taken us through this whole entire 7,000-year exercise. And then comes eternity, which is forever and ever and ever and ever, and then forevermore. So, uh, how did we do here on the introduction? So, the something spectacular is supposed to happen on the 16th. If it doesn't, I got egg in my face, but so what? I'm not proud. Um, I wonder if my lights are flashing here, why that is. Maybe the Lord's telling me it's time to wrap up and get to my second one. But anyway, um, that makes a pretty good introduction. It's not supposed to be scary, even though nine-tenths of us are going to die. But the the guys that want to listen and, and equip themselves, which is, it's easy to tell you the truth. The The hardest part of the whole thing is swallowing our pride. And our paradigms and our hanging on to these false religions and these false teachings within our religions of Christianity and uh, and uh, Ju Judaism, and then thirdly all the other religions, hanging on to false beliefs. That uh, there's only one Creator. He gave us a set of instructions, which are the Torah, and uh, the Torah is fur further described. Like the Torah, really essentially is the, the six hundred or so specific instructions. And then uh, secondly, it's an expansion on the understanding of all those things and stories that illustrate them, both good and bad, throughout the writings and the and the prophets. And then the, the inspired commentary, as my wife dubbed it, and I like that. So uh, those are all the words of the Lord. And then he sends his servants, and I'm one of them. Rick Joyner was another one who uh, the Lord got after quite a bit because he kept mixing his own theology, which is very, very askewed. And I'm going to talk a bit about that in uh, this next episode. So I'm going to sign off and listen to it, and then I'm going to carry on with the four horses of the apocalypse. And I didn't mean this to be dark and scary, but anyway, that's what happens in the middle of the night in a truck out in the middle of nowhere. Signing off, Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World, Daniel Tube.